In this video, I want to talk to you about how to go about building your primary content channel. And this idea comes from the book Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson. Great book on learning how to get traffic for your business. So here is the key to building your content channel. You have to build one primary content channel. Now, why should you go about doing that? Because you want to get known and build a brand on one channel first. You want to establish your authority with content on one channel. You want to attract audience on autopilot. It's much better to build one primary content channel that's really powerful rather than building 10 different channels that are so-so or very weak. And what happens as a result is you get exponential returns over time. People find your content, they subscribe, and then they become your fans. For example, 2000 books. Videos that we published five, six years ago are gaining popularity, authority, and they get us leads and sales every single week. Unlike ads where you pay you get results, but then when you don't pay, there is nothing that's coming your way. So you have to build a primary content channel as you are going about building your business. Now, I want to give you a very important warning here because I see this all the time when I have coaching clients, coaching clients with lots of content channels. They're trying blogging and YouTubing and podcasting and Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Pinterest and all sorts of things. But what happens is they lack progress in all those fronts. Why? There's no traction anywhere. They're spread all over the place. Remember, you do not need to be on all the platforms to be wildly successful. This is something really important to understand. This is a lesson I had to learn the hard way as well. So really important to understand, each business should have one primary content channel where you focus your energy and effort on. This should be the one where you spend all of your energy. And not only that, you love that content channel. You are a consumer of that channel and you can see yourself being a producer of content on their channel. For example, 2000 books, 2015, it was the YouTube channel and still the primary focus of all the effort that goes into 2000 books. 2016 is when I launched the podcast and initially what I did was I had a completely separate content on YouTube and on podcasts. Podcast had author interviews, YouTube was more of the videos, and that was really painful. That slowed me down tremendously. And that is something I advise everyone against. This is a very dangerous path to follow. Don't do it. Don't try to rev up multiple media channels at the same time. Go with one thing, really dominate that before going to another one. Today, the 2000 Books YouTube channel has over 60,000 subscribers, maybe 60 65,000 subscribers, something around that. The podcast, just in the month of November, I just looked at the most recent stats as of December 1st, we got 94,000 downloads in the month of November in June. And that podcast has been going like crazy. Now what happens is all the content like this video right now, it goes into our podcast. So it's leveraged. The content gets leveraged on both the channels and that's really magical. That's the best place to be. Not only that, the edited transcripts from a lot of our videos, they go onto our blog and that becomes our SEO platform. That's how we get SEO traffic. So. The key here is pick one platform, build your platform, get to work on your dream hundred, get to work on finding the network on that platform and focus on building that platform for 12 months before you try to go all over the place. So each business, as Russell says, should have one primary channel where you focus your energy on. Don't try to spread your effort all over the place. I've learned that lesson the hard way. It's really dangerous to do that. It will take you away. It will diminish all of your efforts. So now the key is you have to understand what people want on each platform so you can deliver the right content on each of them. See, Facebook is about personal stories. It's about current events. It's Facebook live videos and things like that. Podcasts, on the other hand, it's educational. It's inspirational. It's audio interviews. It's audio content. It's long form. Facebook doesn't really have their attention space. People attention um, length in some ways. People don't watch your videos for an hour. But on podcast, people will listen to your interview for over an hour just because it's value, it's educational, it's inspirational, and they're getting something very useful while Facebook is very short-term attention kind of stuff. Blogs, you get long-form 
written content, they're educational, and you're able to convert those into uh, those viewers, into subscribers, and into customers. Instagram, it's about images, it's about behind the scenes of your life, your journey, your process, it's inspirational. YouTube, again, it's educational, it's how-to videos, it's inspirational, it's entertainment. We're able to leverage our YouTube videos and turn them into podcast episodes. People who are listening to our podcast episodes, they enjoy the podcast episodes as they are. They don't really care to go and watch YouTube videos a lot of the times. While our YouTube audience, they enjoy their YouTube videos and they may or may not listen to the podcast. It doesn't matter because we are available to them on both the fronts because our videos are designed or our audios are designed such that they can go either ways. So you have to understand what people want on each of the platforms. It's no use trying to create content on Facebook, video long form educational video content on Facebook, because Facebook is not a content library. It's an ephemeral marketing platform. Really important to understand. I see this all the time with my coaching clients. They are confused between putting up videos on YouTube versus uh, Facebook. Facebook and YouTube are completely different purpose. Facebook is for marketing while YouTube is creating a content library. Facebook is ephemeral marketing, here today, gone tomorrow, uh, current events, live, personal stories, all that stuff, while YouTube is literally educational content that will sit there for years and years and years. YouTube is the second largest search engine. So the good to great video summary I did six years ago, it's still there. Lean startup video summary I did on YouTube is six years ago, people still find it. Not only that, more people watch it now than they did a few years ago. So it keeps on growing. So you have to really be very clear what kind of content you're putting and where you're doing that. You don't wanna just randomly put content all over the place. That's not gonna work either. You have to understand the intent. Remember, uh, Gary Vee talks about that quite a bit. He says, context is king. Content, oh, well, let me rephrase it. He says, content is king, but context is God. Context is God. So you can't just randomly put content all over different platforms. You have to know the context in which that content is being put in order to really make it shine. Context is God. Content is king, context is God. That's what Gary Vee says. So you have to understand what viewers want on each of these platforms. Now, another key is when you want to be omnipresent, you can do it in three different ways. One is to publish completely unique content on each platform. Trust me, this is not where most people want to start. This takes a lot of budget. This takes a lot of personal time and effort and energy, not just personal, uh, probably huge team, lots of money is required. I tried with YouTube and podcast. I really, really do not recommend that to anyone. It was a painful affair. Another thing you can do is publish the same information in different formats to every network. Even then, it's a lot of work. It gets diluted. The third way to do it is one master show, as Russell says, and that's exactly what we're doing here at 2000 Books. This master show goes on a primary channel, your YouTube video, and then it gets redistributed on other channels for ex with very little effort. The podcast, literally, we take the audio from the podcast, my audio editor takes the audio, the audio from the YouTube video, uh, puts the intro and outro at the back and the front, and there we go. It doesn't take us more than half an effort, half an hour of effort on our editing team and our content production team to really do this. So it's really a uh, very minimal effort to redistribute this. Not only that with the blog, um, for the videos that we know that we need to get SEO traffic for, or not videos, but the book summaries or whatever ideas we need to get SEO traffic for, we'll create edited transcript and put them into blog form, but not all of them. Not only that, some of these videos will go into our email newsletter, what is called the Four Book Friday. By the way, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter because every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, we send you four ideas, four actionable ideas for from four great books. It's called the Four Book Friday. Every Friday, we send that. So make sure you get that, okay? So simple ideas here to be omnipresent on every platform without uh, burning yourself out. And what we're doing here is we're using the YouTube content to just use it all over the map. And that's really powerful. Now the key is promoting your content. It's not enough to just put the content out there. You need to promote that show. You need to use your own distribution channels to promote your content. Maybe your friends, fans, subscribers, followers. And most importantly, your email list, if you have any. That's because the, that's the traffic you own. That's your core distribution channel. These are people who have the best relationship with you. So have them like, view, comment, share, whatever it is. 
right? So over time, as your audience grows, the need for promotion of content goes down. I don't really send out emails about the newest videos to our email subscribers all the time because we don't need as much promotion of that content because we have a lot of organic reach on YouTube in the sense we have 60, 64, 64 65,000 YouTube subscribers. We have a podcast that organically gets 90, over 90,000 downloads. So it's not such a big deal for us to constantly hit up our email list for that. But when you're when your list is small, when your downloads are small, when your views are small, then you need to do more of that. So there, that's the key. If you want to build a content marketing based business, you need to be very aware of building your content channel. By the way, if you are interested in building your online business empire, if you are a YouTuber, podcaster, blogger, and you want to learn how I have built 2000 books on the backs of this content marketing business and how you too can build your empire in your niche, whatever it might be. I have coached different people. I've coached people in artificial intelligence and in dating in different niches all across the board on drawing, artistry, uh, productivity courses. I've coached all sorts of people. And if you are interested in learning how to build your online business as a YouTuber, as a podcaster, as a blogger, if you want to sell your coaching or your info products and you want to use power of info marketing to build your online business, check out my coaching program. I am opening it up soon. And by January, we will start that project. Uh, we will start that um, mastermind. So now is the time to get in. Um, the deadline for, uh, I will be closing enrollment before January 1st. So this is the time to get in. Go to 2000books.com slash coaching, apply for it. And if we are a good fit, uh, we will find out about it. And maybe you can join us to help you build your online business empire. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye-bye.